Let's get it. I'm reminding, I'm reminding everyone that Christmas is here. I'm reminding everyone that Christmas is here. Yep. Christmas is around the corner. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there we go. And let's not forget that there is a light here. Okay, let me see. Okay. That's good. Okay. You can hear me loud and clear on both sides? Yes. Okay. Let me begin to record. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for um, for tonight. We thank you for what you are doing in our time. I want, um, wherever you are around the world and you are watching by justin.tv forward slash Dikai Mary, or you are, um, you are, um, you are joining by, um, if you are joining by the conference call on the telephone line, thank you, thank you. Um, I am inviting you. There's somebody with a phone with an echo. Okay. Um, I want I want everybody to begin to pray. Begin to pray and invite the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray, please. Begin to pray. The Holy Spirit, we invite you. Please begin to pray. Begin to pray. Wherever you are in the world, begin to pray and ask God to come among us tonight. Ask for the Holy Spirit to be mighty among us and to do big, big things tonight. Please come, come expecting something big to happen in your life tonight. Something to shift. Dear Jesus, we look up to you, dear Jesus. We look up to you tonight, dear Jesus. We look up to you for miracles. We look up to you for healings. We look up to you for open doors for new opportunities. Opportunities for greatness. Opportunities for greatness. Opportunities to profit you. Opportunity to render great service to humanity, to your church, to your kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, there is somebody that is watching this program, and at the same time, your phone is turned on. Can you?
can you mute the uh, the Justin TV so that you can listen on the telephone line? Yeah, there's somebody that just came in. And you just came in like a, a, a minute or two ago. Please, can you turn? Can you can you put a um, a headphone? into your laptop so that you can watch me on Justin TV without it echoing back to me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your obedience. Thank you. I love you. I care about you. So everyone who are watching on Justin TV and at the same time, if you are participating on the phone, just put an earphone into the into the laptop or into the computer so that you alone will be listening to to me on Justin TV while you can also participate on the on the telephone line that is how we do it okay dear spirit of the living god we thank you we adore you we worship you without you we can do nothing we look up to you for miracles and for big things you call us to build empires, nations. You call us to build institutions. That's the reason why you call us. You did not call us just for one house, some kids, a husband, a wife, some food on a table every day. You call us also to do something that is big so that even though we were born in quiet spots of the earth, you want the entire earth to hear about us. Each of us coming to this earth, we come with a package from heaven to display to the earth. So tonight we call on your name for you to be the miracle that will happen to us. Lord, I have faith in all these people. I have faith in your people gathered tonight over Justin TV, gathered tonight over the conference call. I have faith in the people from Virginia, Maryland, D.C., people from Montreal, people from Hawaii, people from Birmingham, people from Mississippi, people from Georgia, people from Alabama, people from Florida. I have faith in people from New York, people from Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Italy, Portugal, all these different reunions, Mauritius, Madagascar, all these different nations. Lord, I have faith in them because I have faith in you. Therefore, tonight, you will release faith into your people. Supernatural faith will be activated and released among your people tonight for us to take back, to take back territories. Hallelujah. Tonight, Lord, give us special ability to pray. Let the spirit and gift of prayer be released and be poured like rain upon us so that by the time we leave the prayer line tonight, we are soaked. We are so soaked with your ability that we will just want to run and shout. And then we will begin to do massive things. I mean, your spirit will ignite fire in us. And this fire will begin to lead us into opportunities. And things will explode in and out. Brethren, there are angels at work right now. I'm sorry to stop what I'm doing. But the spirit of God is simply leading me to tell you guys. There are angels at work right now. Anywhere where you are in the world and you're watching, there is an angel that has been assigned to you because of this program. This program, this program has been assigned to happen. And remember what I told you that from, from yesterday till the end of the year, I will be having a program like this every 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central. And tonight, just now as I'm talking to you, I have been told that... Angels have been assigned. I've just seen an angel. That's why I'm telling you this. I've just witnessed an angel. 
So that's why I am I am telling you this. In the Chimera Ministries, there is a conference going on. How can I help you? Oh, yeah, we are we are in a conference. Are you off today? Okay. Do you want to join in the conference? Okay, after the conference, then I'll be praying with you. Okay, the number is 424-203-8400. And the code is 955-967 and the palm sign. Okay. Okay, so I need them all. Yes, sir. conference, you have to make up. Okay. Okay, for all, you can make up your back. Hey, hey. All right. Um, I was talking to uh, someone um, uh, who want to join the conference. So, everywhere where you are in the world, there is an angel. If you are joining this conference right now, an angel has been assigned to you. There's a reason. Not just an angel. Angels have been assigned to everyone who are joining this conference. An angel is being assigned and angels have been assigned to your territory. Because tonight what we'll be doing will be taking back territories. That's what we are doing tonight. The reason why many of you cannot see the future, cannot see into the future. The reason why many of you are limited in scope to what you are capable of doing is not because you are not capable of doing great things, but it's because, um, it's because um, there is something blocking you, that there is something at war against you and you don't know it. There are entities in the atmosphere and there are entities on the earth. And there are entities in the water. There are personalities are coming out from, from the land of the dead into your territory because of you. So I'm simply telling you that tonight because I want you to know this. There are many of you before you, you moved to your new location, before you moved to where you currently live and have your job, Entities were already moved there to block you. So I'm simply letting you know how this thing works. It is the Spirit of God talking through me. This is not what I prepared for today. So you should know, this is not me, somebody else. God is talking through me. And I'm happy that he's doing that. Many of you, when you get a job... Because you didn't have time to call somebody like me to prepare you for that job. Before you went to that job, there were already things waiting for you to arrive to begin to deal with you so that you leave that job. So as to discourage you to destroy your future through that job. Many of you, before you, before you, you went into a wedding, before you went into a marriage, before you even started a relationship, you told a man, I love you, and you mean business, and you want a real relationship, whether a strong friendship, strong partnership, strong colleagueship, strong marriage, something already went into that to make sure it does not happen. Your city, where you are from, where you were born, and the city where you are currently living, is occupied by entities that are to obstruct you, to stop you from being able to fulfill the divine mandate and destiny. And at the same time tonight, I'm simply being honest with you, the reason why these things are so is because some of you, where you live right now, your nation, your state, your cities, the, the power brokers where you live, the power brokers, those who are in charge of policy making and policy implementation, the enforcement of the law, etc., in your territory, 
in your nation have their hand in witchcraft, in water spirits, have their hands in the shrines of various voodoo, medicine men, and traditional workers of iniquities. They have their hand in those things. Therefore, they have charged the atmosphere of your environment with demons. So let's begin to face it. So tonight, our prayer is going to be for the Almighty God to help you take back your family, yourself, to take back your, um, your nation, to take back your environment, your region, your county, and to begin to feel the atmosphere with his presence and with the angels. Because until God feels the atmosphere with the angels, until he feels it with the stars of heaven, you won't succeed. No matter how hard you pray, no matter how hard you try, the presence of God must show up. So that's why it's not enough to pray. You, you begin to pray when you feel the presence of God show up. If the presence does not show up, don't pray. Or pray until the presence show up and then you start real prayer. Another easy way for you to saturate your territory with angelic presence, the presence of God, is by worship. Worship that comes from you, not from songs that other people have sung. Music by other people is good. I play music by other people, but most of the time when I'm doing real serious worship, I allow my spirit to, to make up some instant music. Instant music. Maybe I'm reading the word of God instantly. I make a song out of it. It has come through years of practice. When you begin to worship like that, that you are singing to God instantly, what happens is that the worship becomes a power thing. It becomes a force. And it calls angels down. It's just like when you go to the dark forces. When you sing, you dance, you play the drums, you ring the bell, you shake the rattles, you pour a very costly alcohol, you pour it on the ground, demons will arise, whether they like it or not. They will, and they will possess people. Um, Gilliam, did you remember telling me about there is this guy from Haiti, he played this music, and you told me that when this music is played in club, people get possessed. You remember? Hello? Have I lost everybody? Okay. Yes. Do you remember? Do you remember that? Do you remember you and I having that conversation? Yes, I remember that. Okay. But now I want to tell you that it is not just limited to, to, to where you are from. Where I am from, in the African continent, yes, there is a, something like that. Say they are dancing, young men and women are dancing to the traditional music. What they will do is somebody will go and get a bottle of gin or, or whiskey or bourbon, some very strong quality alcohol, and they will, they will take a sip of it in their mouth, and then they will, they will spit it out into the atmosphere where the dance is going on. And instantly, everyone who are doing the dance will get possessed by demons. You see it immediate. It's immediate. Yeah. It's immediate. People get possessed immediately by demons just by spreading that alcohol, pouring that alcohol into the, into the air. Immediately, people get possessed. Almost everybody, they get possessed. And sometimes people begin to levitate. They begin to leave the ground. For those of you who come from Nigeria, who come from the 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 the, the, the Calabar area, and the uh, and the Abreba, the Ohafia, the Anuchuku area, the Akwaibom area, and you know they play Ekbe. I do not know whether my sis my sister Deborah is there tonight. Deborah, are you there? 
Okay, Doris, are you online tonight? Okay, Doris is not yes, online. I'm here. Okay. You know when that they play what they call, so the rest of you have to listen to this and look look at this. There is what they called uh, Ekbe, Inyangbe, you know? Eyamba, and there are several degrees of Ekbe. I'm not talking about Ebo, because that's a different matter altogether. I'm talking about Ekbe. Okay, the one with the bell. Okay. Do you know that when you go to the villages, the day they want to play serious ekbe, eye wugo, eye wugo ma, what they call eye wugo ma, I'm speaking in a Nigerian language now to those of you who are watching or participating in this conference. What they call eye wugo ma is nothing. Doris, how do we, how how can you interpret that for them or Deborah? How do you interpret eye wugo ma? Can you interpret it in English, please? Okay, Doris, what do you understand by the woman? Mm, okay, let, let, let me go ahead and tell you what it is. The woman means it's when it's they. Thing, so most, some of the things we may don't really know what I mean, what it is. Right, but let me now tell you what it is. Because those men are the elders of the church, the knights of the churches. Presbyterian, Lutheran, uh, Apostolic, uh, uh, Methodist, Catholic. They are all church members. And when they come to church, they will tell you, when you talk about the spirit of the living God, they will be the one to attack you, that you shouldn't go and bring Holy Spirit to the church. You shouldn't do all those things. But the same people, they are the one who are, when somebody is to be made an etubum, is to be made, is to be lifted to the rank of an etubum. A, a, a young man or a man is to be made an etubum. The, before you are even made an etubum, they will put you in the Egbe house to teach you. They first of all have to teach you how to connect and to relate with especially Leviathan. Leviathan is the most wicked and the most connecting of all the demons, of all the arch demons, arch fallen angels of Lucifer. They have to teach them how to pacify, how to sacrifice to the goddess of the water first and foremost. They have to teach them how to to sacrifice and worship the goddess of the forest, the goddess of the air, and all of that. They must teach them how to do those things. If they do not teach them, you can never be elevated to the rank of a tube. I'm sorry to those of you who belong to those things. I'm not exposing anything. I'm simply telling what it is. <laughs> yes. You must, you can never be an Etubum without you knowing. If they do not teach you how to sacrifice to the goddess of the sea, the Bayatan, and to Baal, and to Baal, and to these other things, the, 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 the dead, if they do not teach you how to sacrifice to the dead and call them up and send them back, how to call up the goddess of the sea and send them back. If they do not tell you how to call on the on the on the prince of the air and send them back, you will never enter into any degree of those things. And that is why when they do those things, a woman can never cook the food for them. No woman will cook food for those men when they are being trained to do those things in that place. It's only men that can cook for them. Are you kidding me? This is serious business. And you think it's just a dance? It's just a masquerade from Africa? <laughs> Everybody's just having a good time. You are joking. Joker? This is not just a dance. This is serious business to elevate some people to take over territories. 
to be elevated to be a prince in some of the African play, African kingdoms and around the world, you have to offer an animal sacrifice or a human sacrifice. You guys know this. In yeah. certain occultic realms, you must offer something. You must offer somebody. I mean, look at some of the some of the ekbe, ekbe, ekbe things, some of the things that people do, some of the, the the worship of the water goddess, they will carry a whole cow in a ship or in a canoe. And when they reach the, at that time, I have watched some of these things. At that time, the water is calm. The sea is calm. But when once they start playing that drum, the water becomes problematic. The water is always calm, but when one they begin to play the music and they begin to take the cow plus the other thing into the middle of the sea, and then they dump the cow. They, it's a live cow. It's a live cow. Then they push it into the water. You will see the commotion in the water. And then you will see something take the cow down to the bottom of the water. And then, uh, and then calmness will return. The goddess of the sea took it. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. These guys spend time to do things. They take time to do these things. And we as Christians must begin to take time to take back our territory because they do all these offerings. They do all these killings. They do all this giving of money, money exchange and things. Do that so that they take over your territory so that you yourself you cannot take that territory until you begin to do the kind of stuff I'm going to be teaching you this week. That's why tonight we are talking about taking over territory. Tomorrow, I'll be teaching on money must change hand. Your money is, then, is in the hand of somebody else and tomorrow we are going to get that money back into your hand. Amen. So tomorrow, you better be in the conference 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Western, uh, Pacific. Pacific. Pacific, thank you, Doris. Tomorrow is money must change hand. The money you've been working for some time is going to somebody else. And you don't know it. You walk like donkey, like a buggy. You don't find no money. You don't achieve anything at the end of the year. And you ask yourself, what have I done? Where is this money going to? What kind of expenses am I doing that I don't even have money? And you are working so hard. Somebody is supernaturally, somebody has made sure that your money is under sabotage, hostage, and so on. And not only that, when you hear them playing Ekpe and the rest of the thing, I'm not attacking Ekpe, I'm saying it again. I'm simply teaching with it. I'm just using it as an analogy. Ekpe is a small part of it. There is a bigger, there is a bigger part of it. It's one of those things, when you look at every culture has something similar to Ekpe, whereby Baal uses to control a territory. Families are controlled. For example, have you discovered that when the Ekpe is dancing, they are playing through the street. It knows exactly the house of somebody whose family has a line, a traditional line with the Ekbe, and it will go there and bow. The Ekbe will enter that compound and bow and keep moving. How do they know? How do they know? And let me tell you another thing you have to know. When they say Ewugoma, in Africa, when they tell you that Ewugoma or Ewugobio, it means this. And let me tell you so that you hear this correctly. So that you be aware of these things and begin to take your Christianity seriously. Begin to take the blood seriously. Begin to take the word of God seriously. This is what it means. Everything is on a lockdown in that city. The people who belong to that, that society, organization, they will close down business, everything in that city or in that town or in that village. Nobody goes out to farm or to the market or to the grocery store, drive in and out. You cannot. Car doesn't enter during the days they play that thing. You know the reason? It's because 
They do not want you to see the supernatural side of what they are doing. Because when they play real Ekbe to the sea, the Ekbe actually begin to dance on top of water. Ekbe actually dance. A that is a dance. A masquerade is dancing on top of sea, on top of the sea. And all of them see it. These are the same people who will attack you when they come to church. And yet, they know the power in the other side. And they don't want you to have power in your own side. Because they know if you have power in your own side, their own side will not work. The Ekbe masquerade actually dances on top of the water as though water is land. And that's why that's why they, they close down the village. They don't want you to see the supernatural side of what they do. If you dare come out to watch what they are doing, they, oh, eh, that's why you hear that somebody, somebody, somebody is lost. Oh, oh, so. Because they bury the person. They kill you and bury you so that you do not talk about what you see. That's why they do not want you to come out of your house when they do those things. Why? They've seen people levitate. They've seen somebody walk on water. And then when you tell them the story of Jesus walking on water, they tell you, ah, it didn't happen. Science doesn't, nobody can walk on water. Yet, they're telling you that so as to deprive you from having the real power because they know that you possibly know the real truth, but they do not want you to get into it. Lovely uh, princess, if you are there, could you read Psalm 24, please? If the princess is there, could you read Psalm 24? Okay. If she's not there, um, huh? Okay, if she's not there, is there a... Doris, do you have your Bible? Could you read Psalm 24 for us? Okay. Yeah, there's a lady called Princess. She was supposed to read the word tonight. Okay. That's true. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy sins, O Jacob. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting God, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head for ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting God. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. I want you to read back where it begins. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Read back those places. Doris, read them back. I like that voice. Read it back, please. Okay. Read it back, please. Okay. Read it back, please. 
Lord, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. The Lord of hosts. That means God is the commander of billions of armies. God is a commander of a host. He is the king of glory. And what is this ancient door? Julian, read, read verse 7 in French. Let's hear it. Let's, let's give it a punch. Okay. What, what do you understand by this ancient door? What is this ancient doors? This everlasting doors? Do you know what it is? What is this everlasting doors that the, that the psalmist is talking about? Did you guys know that apart from Elijah, Elisha, Moses... And the rest of them, do you know that there are two people that until you read the Bible deeply, you do not know that they were also prophets? David the king was a prophet. Abraham was a prophet. Did you know that? The Bible clearly talk about it. And when I saw it, I said, wow, I can now understand why Many things that David wrote were not written when either he was drunk or were not written just with his intelligence. It was, a super, it was when he was in the supernatural that he wrote those things. He sang those songs. He prayed those prayers. The ancient gates... And the everlasting doors. I'm going to do a teaching verse by verse on Psalm 24 along the way. But let me just talk about verse 7. Doris, I'm so grateful that you read tonight. You have no idea. What is this ancient doors? Ancient gates? Everlasting doors? That is, could be, look at this way. There are things in your society, in your city, in your nation, in your village, in your county, in your family that does not want to change. It has been locked. Armies of darkness have gathered to make sure that the door to your future, the door to your money, the door to your marriage, the door to your happiness is locked. Can I tell you guys something that God showed me one time and it scared me? But let me tell you. He showed me a tree that has been cut down to its stump. Only the stump of the tree remained. So that when you pass through that place, you will see that there was a big tree in this place. Because you can see how big the stump still is. But then... You know that when a tree has been cut down, what happened when the rain begins to fall? If the tree was, if it was cut down as a healthy tree, what happened when the rain fall? Somebody jump in. Okay. It will begin to come up again. It will begin to sprout up again. But this is what I was shown. I was shown that when the tree was cut down, a chain, heavy chains was brought. And chain down the stump of the tree. And a big key, a big key was used to lock the chain and the tree to the foundation of the earth. So that no matter what rain falls on the tree, on the stump, there is nothing that can come up. So that it will die where it is. Because, yes, because it has been chained. Not only that it has been chained. It has been locked with an iron padlock. And God began to tell me 
there are lots of people who are going to come to you who have been chained down, who have already been cut down, as though that wasn't enough. They've been cut down, but also they've been chained down and also locked with a key. And he said to me, your job will be, now you guys can now see how I began to enter into the ministry of deliverance. I didn't, I didn't start out with deliverance in full. I just wanted just to be an ordinary pastor and minister to people and pray for people and let people problem be solved and receive miracles, but not to go into the territory of power. I mean, I mean miracle will take power, but real excessive violent power to set people free. When I saw that, that a lot of people have been cut down and that was not enough, chained down, and that was not en enough, locked up and locked down. That's when it dawned on me how mighty a lot of problems are. Because a lot of people who are in these three stages, cut down, chained down, and locked down. Three things. And a lot of people do not even know that that is what has happened to them. They have no idea. They don't even know it. And that is why no matter what they do, no matter what prayer is prayed, no matter what fasting is done, nothing happened. Until people like me look into it and discover these people have been cut down, chained down, and locked down. And our job now, my job now become a real ministry. To first get the chain out. Two, first of all, unlock just, just open the, 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 the lock, unlock the lock, get it out, get the chains out, and then let the rain fall on it, and then let your germination begin again. A lot of work, but also God can do it, do it in a twinkling of an eye. But once I know that that is the problem, then it's easy. That's why many of you, I pray for you in a second, following day things are happening because I've been able to see the root cause of the problem. So sometimes we are just praying, 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 praying. So just telling people to pray for you is not enough. You must know the person you go to to ask for prayer whether that person actually knows what the real problem is. What is the foundation? What is the problem that is holding you down? Because until that is solved, the prayer is not going anywhere. Because once you identify, for example, when I'm praying with, for, for somebody and identify the demon behind it, the problem is solved. Because I'll call the demon by name and say, I know you are there, come out. I was talking with a young man today, one of my sons, and he, he was telling me what was happening. I said, I know what's going on. There's a demon and I'm going to deal with him. He has to leave you. There's a demon inside your body and he's going to go. And many a time we do not know people we've associated in the past Sex we've had in the past, we didn't. We thought we were sleeping with a woman, or a woman think he was sleeping with a, a man that loves him. You do not know you are sleeping with a demon. There's a demon inside the person you are sleeping. And what happened when you have the sex? The demon come from the. That's what we call a transfer of spirit. A spirit is transferred from one person to another, and one of the easiest way through sex, through food, and so on. Exchange of gift, money keys, what kind of stuff? A dance? Do you see how people go to the club? You go alone and you start to dance. You tell a woman, can I dance with you? And the woman say yes. Or the woman come to you and say, can I dance with you? And you say yes. And you guys start dancing. And the next thing, both of you end up in bed in your house or in her house. And then there is a slavery thing begin to happen. One of you begin to control the other. And everything that you have begin to go to the earth. The one that has the strongest demonic attachment or the strongest evil human spirit will be getting from the other person. And, will, and the other person will not contribute to it until one person gets mad. And then the other person gets mad too. And want to force you to be in a relationship that you know is not working for you. Ancient doors 
are authorities and powers that has been forced, that has forced themselves to control a city, to control a place, to control a job. That is why in your job place, you discover that certain kind of people control that job. Deborah, I hope you are getting what I'm saying tonight. Certain, certain kind of people control certain kind of job. You go to work in a particular place, you discover it's a certain kind of people who control that job, who are in charge of it. And except you become like them, they won't promote you. You will only be attacked. You will always be written up. Except you go into that job, you call somebody like me and say, prepare me for this new job that I've gotten. Look into this job to see who are the people, what is going on there. And then I prepare you. And then when you enter into that job, all the powers that have been playing there come under your authority. And they'll be laughing at you. Yeah, how are you? Oh, yeah. They are simply saying, we wish you didn't have what you have because we'll be in charge of you and deal with you. Even young doctors, they are happy to become doctors. Yeah. Until they go, they finish medical school, see their exams, certified, and they start to practice and they discover that it's full of jealousy and envy. And they discover that the nurses are playing on each other, uh, reporting to doctors, doctors reporting to the, this, the, they begin to see the crack in the, in the walls. And they are like, I thought this was just a friendly place. And first of all, if the doctor, if the if the person that trained you, trained you well, the person will tell you when once you go to that hospital to go and work, find out who are the bosses, the big doctors in those places and go and make friends with them. Go and greet them. That's what we say. Go and greet them. <laughs> because they are the ones controlling those places. They are the big shops there. And I can assure you, in a lot of working places around the world, many people who come to that job have a lot of demonic activities, human spirit at work for them. And you are going there with nothing. Are you serious? You think you will last a day or two in that job? They will piss you so much that you enter your car, you leave the job for them. And that's what they want. And they will laugh at you. Say, look at that person, he wants to come here and work. <laughs> Does he even know what we are doing here? Every one of those people, there are some. There's a job that I used to have, and I discovered that one of the uh, uh, women that was my supervisor was a witch. She was a witch, and she told me finally. I mean, when you see somebody, they are always bold, they can tell you anything and get away with it. Even if you report them, it doesn't go anywhere. You know who they are. And they will, if, if you become friendly with them, then they will invite you to come with them to what they really do, where their real power comes from. And these people have spent time to develop their power in these dark things. Why don't you spend your power to develop? Why don't you spend your time to develop power with God? Certain families are in charge of the police work, in charge of, in charge of being a police officer or sheriff department or so. So, so families are in charge of being attorneys and judges. Social families are professors. Social families are medical doctors. Social families are pastors. It runs. They control certain people, control certain things. Certain families control certain things. And in certain places, fallen stars are controlling certain things. And when you come to that city, you come under your, the authority. And if you are smart enough, before you move to a city, you prepare, you stay with God and God prepare you. You take over the city before you come in. And as you are coming in, they will inform each other that there is a star coming in. They will tell each other that you are coming in. And that they will keep away. And they will do everything to make you not to be in that place. But if you are somebody who knows what they know, you tell them, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't play no game, okay? You tell them. You go outside at your balcony or open your window and you talk to the atmosphere and say to them, listen, I know you guys are there, but I am now, I'm a new sheriff in town. 
this town is not gonna be too it's not gonna be enough for both you and i so you guys need to move away you remember that movie there's a new sheriff in town so tonight i want you to begin to pray for the ancient gates to crumble ancient gates that has been put against certain people so that they do not progress they do not prosper there are gates that has been put so that you do not prosper there is a gate put against you there is a gate that has been put against you so that you cannot climb that fence tonight i want you to shout in anger shout wherever you are don't worry about who hears you don't worry about who knows what you're doing. I want you to shout, jump about. If you want to run around like crazy, run around and tell these ancient gates to crumble in the name of Jesus Christ. God has given you the authority tonight. There are angels around you. Begin to tell angels to take over your family line, to take over your city, to take over places, your place of job. Because these people, they, they put gates against you. That's why you're not getting no job. You can't get married. That's why things are not working out for you. You've lived in the same city for how many years? You were born there. People come from other countries, buy land, buy properties, buy cars, start businesses, and they flourish, and you have not. I want you to get angry tonight. Take back your territory tonight. Tell God that you're taking back. Take back your territory. Don't tell those powers that you are, you've arrived. You are now here. Tell those ancient doors and gates to crumble. And tonight, they will crumble. Go ahead and pray. Come on, go ahead and pray.
Let me share. Let me share something with you all. Please, please, somebody who has the uh, your your Justin TV on, can you can you make it go down, please? Um, um, make make it go down so that I won't be hearing myself. Please, please, you turn it down before. Turn it back. Turn it down. Okay. Let let let's do this. I want to share something with you. Please, please, whosoever um, your Justin TV is on, can you put a can you put something over your ear so that I do so that we do not hear you, please. Every territory, this is just a simple. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I I have instructed whenever you are, if you are watching me on Justin TV, and you are also listening on and participating on the telephone, put a, a headphone, um, so that you alone can can listen to me through your computer and laptop because. Is echoing into your phone line and we are hearing it and that is not fair the rest of us want to enjoy it okay let me share something for you to know tonight I do not want you to leave this prayer line without knowing this truth every nation every state every city every boom boom town every village has a conglomeration, an organized demonic criminal activity from the supernatural. There are certain demons, let me put it in a very simple way. There are certain demons and fallen angels that are organized as arch fallen angels those ones are the princes of nations they're in charge of nations and then there are what we call and those ones that are the princes of nations are rulers they have the title of rulers those are the ones we call principalities that also organization exists in God. They are archangels that are in charge of nations. They are also called principalities. So both sides have it. Principality means a prince. Then there are fallen angels who are in charge of cities, counties, specific places specific departments of governments or businesses, specific businesses. Then there are demons. Those that inhabit can inhabit anybody, anything. They are slaves to humans and to angel and to fallen stars and to Lucifer. Demons are are, are slaves to these two groups, humans and and the dark world. Now, this is what happens. Some of these demons and fallen angels have been in charge of these places for billions of years. That's what we call ancient doors. They've, they've become a force in that place. And they are in charge of rulers and leaders, wicked rulers and leaders on the earth. When I begin to teach on the demonic realm, you will hear the organization, how it's organized in God's side. And when I begin to teach about the angels, the angelic realm in the side of God, you will know how it's organized in the side of God. It's not a small thing we are talking here so that we are really aware of the supernatural things. 
Now, these demons are so organized, but they are not as organized as our own side. Our side is more organized, more bigger. We have bigger soldiers. We have bigger armies. They don't. But the point is that, for example, demons operate in gangs. They operate in gangs. For example, the spirit of hatred, vengeance, revenge, murder, they all come together. The spirit of bitterness, the spirit of misery, sorrow, unhappiness, they all come together. When one comes, it means he's coming with, there is no demon that comes alone. He always comes with mother, father, brother, sisters, cousins, nephews, that they all work together. And there is always one demon that operates in all of them. And God told me his name. It's a demon that we call the spirit of complication. He comes to complicate an issue. While you and your husband are working on making your marriage work, the spirit of complication goes to work. By the time you know it, your husband is already seeing another man, another woman, or another man, and you didn't know he was even a homosexual, to complicate the issue for you. Or by the time you know your wife is already seeing somebody else to complicate the issue. Always there is a complication. The car broke down. By the time they repair the tire, they discover that uh, something else is broken. There's always the spirit of complication to complicate it for you. And you get so angry and you want to do something stupid. He's always there. I've learned about him. I didn't know about him until God told me one day. And his job is always to tie a knot that is difficult to untie. But thank God we have the Holy Ghost. In your city, there are demons that have been there for billions of years. And they formed an ancient door to control things in your territory. Control things in your family. Make sure everyone who are born come under the authority. That's why the next prayer we're going to pray. I want you to break out of your authority. Tell them, um, I quit to come under your authority tonight. I want you to get angry. Father, pour out the spirit of anger upon your people. Violence, force upon your people tonight. I want you to tell the demonic world tonight, wherever you are, I cease to come under your authority. Let's begin to pray. Come on, let's go. And that from now on, you come under the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You demonic world, I speak to you all tonight. I stop coming under your authority. I am under the authority I am under the authority of Jesus Christ the Messiah. I am under the authority of Jesus Christ the Messiah. I quit coming unknowingly or knowingly coming under the authority of territorial prince of darkness, coming under the authority of every darkened forces in the universe. I quit coming under you of your authority. And from tonight, I come under the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I come under the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 I break every dominion and every rulership that I've come under unknowingly. Every agency of government that I've come under that is being ruled by dark forces, I overcome you, I overthrow you, I cease to come under your authority. Say that, say that, say that. Let your rules, let your, gov your governing, your dominion over this territory, let it crumble. Over the Oreca and Abiyohafia, let it crumble. Over Obiefa, let it crumble. Over Aquaibum, 
over Cross River, over Nigeria, let it crumble, 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 crumble. Territorial spirits, national prince that has been controlling this country, your power must crumble tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The prince that controls Canada, that controls Mexico, that controls the UK, that controls Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Australia, Norway, New Zealand, Italy, Sweden, all of Europe, all of Asia, all of the Americas, all of Africa, the Middle East, the Indian Ocean, the, the, the West Indies, all you arch princesses of darkness, your power crumbles tonight in Jesus' name. Have you discovered that if you come from a particular territory of the world, you see a common thing happening to everybody who come from that territory? Have you discovered that? Every, everybody who comes from a different, a particular place. It seems like every one of you are being run by a particular thing. It seems like the same thing is happening to all of you. What are you guys talking about tonight, please? The, the ukulele, the ukulele, like the Justin TV. I, I have told the person to put a headphone over his or her head. The person is not obeying what you are saying. That's the problem. I don't know why. Yeah, I've told the person, please turn the Justin TV off or, or put a microphone a, a head a headphone over your ears so that we don't hear we don't listen to me echoing again and the person has obeyed twice why turn it back on listen to this thing on listen to this thing on the phone line and then you can listen and watch with with a, a headphone over your head please Please just just listen, just obey. This is how you see. This is how this thing goes. There are many people who cannot hold a job today for what we are experiencing over our prayer line. Somebody tell you, this is how I want you to do this job that I've employed you to do, and you wanna do it the way you want to do it. That's why a lot of people don't have jobs today. That's why a lot of people. If you cannot obey a simple instruction. How then are you going to obey your boss, your supervisor? Mm -hmm. See, this, this, you see, these are the issues here. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do what you want to do because there are thousands of people who are watching on Justin TV all over the world, and this thing is going also to the to YouTube. So when I say to 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 people, please, please put if you are watching on Justin TV, then don't listen. Don't participate on the telephone. Turn your telephone off because you're already, you're already, uh, you're already watching me on Justin. But if you want to watch on Justin and also participate on the telephone line, get a headphone. Put it on the way the volume. There is some way where you can put it on your on your tablet, iPad, or laptop or computer so that only you alone can hear me on Justin. Because if you pluck it off, the echo of what I'm saying is coming back to us. This is just a simple thing. And we are begging you, please cooperate with us. I know you really want to get this thing. You want to be part of it. I, I appreciate it. But don't make it difficult for the rest of us. Please. 
So whenever you come, that's why yesterday I asked everybody to mute their phone. But because of the seriousness of what I'm saying today, that's why I didn't tell people to mute their phone because it's so serious what I'm talking about today. Because your territories have been taken over by a lot of this stuff. And I want to hear your reaction to these things. And I want us to pray together. So, so please, let's, let's obey when we come to these things so that it will be easier. Because let me tell you how this thing goes. If somebody like me keep telling you just obey simple thing and you are coming for prayers, your prayer will not be answered. Because you are purposely disturbing what is going on. And, and God will not be happy with you with that. I mean, you cannot go to a church and go down there with your boombox. While the preacher is, is preaching, you turn your boombox on and say, to hell with you, I don't care what you are preaching, I'm here to do a party. They will ask you, they will order you to leave. If you decide not to leave, they will call the cops on you. So we, we just want this thing to be easy for everybody. So, so that I do not, the time that I should be using and the Holy Spirit will be ministering through me, I'm using it to be telling people, don't do this. Don't. Let's behave like adults. I want to focus on, I just want to focus on ministering when I am, I do not want to focus on talking about this kind of thing. It's not good. Okay, so let me tell you guys that there are, there are, there are, there are families. There are people. Who have sold your city. I'm telling you the truth. They are families, agencies, occult group, organizations, individuals who have sold your family, sold your village, sold your territory, sold your nation. So that anybody born into any of those places is already sold. Before you are born. It's like, it's like during the slave days. If you are born by a slave uh, woman, you are a slave. It's as simple as that. There's no two ways about it. You are going to be sold. And there are people who have sold a whole city to darkness. And every pastor you find in some cities are into one occult group or the other. And you ask yourself, why? And people are sick. And people are dying. I know of a family where the father died of cancer, the mother died of cancer, the brother died of cancer, and he himself almost died. Until I stopped it. I told God it must stop. So let's face it. Whoever has sold your city your family, whoever has sold your nation. For example, you look at America, the foundation of this country has been a clash. There's a clash in America, and that's what we are seeing play out today. Because the foundation, those who laid the foundation of this country, laid it on two particular ways. Those who came before, Founded it on Christianity, on solid principle of the Bible, of Jesus as Messiah. And they interacted with the natives. Everything was fine and good until the next dawn came up. And things were founded on things were founded on the occult. In the money, in the monuments, in the way things have been done. So you see, these two, these two foundations is always clashing in America and in many, many cities of the world. You see the two foundations going, fighting each other. So I want you to take note of what I'm saying. Because where you live currently, somebody has sold somebody. And that's why some cities you go to is full of prostitution because somebody has sold a city to prostitution another city you go to somebody has sold it to homelessness you come to that city rich you go you by the time you know it you're homeless there you ask yourself what's going on 
I know of some states in America today. You start a church in that place, it flourish. Oh, you have a big name, it flourish. Everybody come after you. Five years, that church is dead. You are dead, or you are you, you run away. Something will chase you away from that state. And some of you know the state I'm talking about. Every pastor who go to that state have a scandal, or go to jail, or something. Somebody has sold them into something and they don't know. Some cities have been sold to gangsters, things, to gangs and mafias. Some have been sold to a particular political party or a, partic a particular interest group. I want you to take note of those small, small things going on because those are the real things. And until you overcome those things, you won't be free your city will not be free. Nobody will be free. Tonight, I want you to pray this last prayer. I want you to begin to ask God and tell God to deal with whoever sold your nation, sold your family. If they are still alive, let God deal with them tonight. Either God will make them turn their heart, let them repent, or God will begin to remove people. That's all I can say. And I want you to buy back your family with the blood of the Son of God tonight. Buy back your nation. Buy back. Buy back. Buy back your dignity and honor. I want us to pray. Let's pray. And this is the last prayer for the night. Father, I begin to pray tonight. Jehovah, I buy back my family with the blood of Jesus. Deal with anybody who sold my family. Deal with anybody, oh God, who has sold my family to darkness. Buy back anybody who sold my city, my villages, my nation, my, I mean, my relationship, marriage, Lord, deal with them. Lord, deal with them tonight. Deal with them. Deal with them. And remove them. Remove them. Remove them. Remove them. nation. Free the nations of the world from every selling that they've been sold to darkness. From every covenant that has been made with darkness. With the blood of the Son of God, set your people free tonight so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Lord, I buy back my family, my bloodline, my villages, my nations, the nations of the world, your people, with the blood of Jesus who bought us back for God. But Father, I want you to do the underground work and let us be free indeed. In Jesus' name. Not just free, because we read it in the Bible. We want to experience it inside us. Let the atmosphere be free. Let things that we closed against us open up. In Jesus' name. I'm going to begin to pray for you. For you. I'm going to begin to pray for you. I break down every spirit of legalism that has been released against you so that you cannot move forward. 
there are many of you who are bound by some spirit of legalism that has stopped you from moving forward in life. I command them broken tonight in Jesus' name. Legalistic spirit of darkness, ancient doors, barricades, prisons that were set up so that everyone born to the family, born to the nation, will all behave the same. We all come under the same spirit. Do you not see how when a Nigerian meet a Nigerian, you automatically know that that is a Nigerian? They say in the airplanes, how you know that somebody is from Ghana or Nigeria or Cameroon is they are loud <laughs> when they talk. They are not like myself who when I get inside the airplane, I don't talk to anybody. I just sit there. I start, I start reading, reading, reading a book or listening to, to, to something. Or, or reading a magazine. That's what I do. I don't talk. I don't want anybody to, to know that I'm I'm a Nigerian. Because <laughs> they say we are loud. Have you noticed if somebody is from Canada, the way the person will talk, like almost not involved, almost like removed, and you will say these guys are as cold as their territory. Have you noticed that somebody is from India, you will almost think they are arrogant. But when they notice that, oh, you are somebody, like I was talking to an Indian man, he didn't even pay attention to what I was saying. When he realized that I used to be a professor, he said, wow, you used to? You really? Yeah, you really? I just walk away, look at him, I said, this man, you are stupid. <laughs> You are now listening because you hate that there is a title to my name. You see? See, there is a pattern, a trend that follows certain cultures. Certain people will not even talk to you. Except you dress in suits and ties. And everybody will be, hey sir, how are you? How do you do? How? Everybody want to save you. You dress in suits and ties. There are certain cultures, they respect a particular kind of job. There are certain cultures, almost every woman born into that will have children first before they even get married. Certain cultures will not allow the man to be in a marriage. Because what controls that culture wants you to, to move around many women before by the time you are 70 you see death coming that's the time that you will want to settle with a new one or one of them there are certain cultures like that those are ancient doors ancient gates and i want you to know it certain jobs are closed against certain people and you ask why we are talking of ancient gates, everlasting doors that has been there for a long time. And your job is to cripple them, crumble them, crush them, and start a new generation. Let me tell you what God told me about many of you. Many of you are going to be generational breaker. You are breaking with the past generation and you are moving forward with a new generation. Those in your families, your nation who do not want to come with you, leave them behind and go forward. Take back your territory. Take back your territory. If you do not take back your territory, those things will continue to perpetuate wickedness forever. I was telling one of my daughters today, I said, do you know, do you know what makes you and I, we are good with each other? She said, no. I said, because you and I, we are a little bit crazy. And she began to laugh. There is a place where God wants you to be just a little mild crazy against these things. And they will also, they need to feel, they need to feel the bite of your teeth in their skin. So that they know that you are not only backing, but you can you can bite. 
Tonight, the Holy Spirit is pleading with you. Please take back your village. Many of you who come from villages in Africa knows that in each of those villages, there are one or two families that are in charge of those villages. One of their sons is the chief of that place or the paramount ruler or the, or the, or the, or the, uh, the chairman of the municipal council. You guys know this. Same family will control everything. And they have been perpetuating it for years, for generations. Everybody come under their control. Are you serious? Particular family, particular families are making the millions. We are having a conference. Call me after the conference, okay? In a particular place you go to, a particular family are the millionaires and billionaires. And that's it. Are you happy with that? I want you to think about it. And they have put a supernatural fence, gates against you and against your own family, against your own giftedness. Have you not discovered that how gifted you are, but there is no opportunity for you? Have you not seen it? You are very gifted and talented, yet there is no opportunity for you. There is no opportunity for you. Because there is a gate, a supernatural gate and door that has been put against you that you cannot enter. That's what I'm teaching tonight. That's what it's about. For you to put a stop to it. Jesus said, I am the door. If by me anyone enters, you will go in and out and find pasture. Dear Jesus, I ask you to be the supernatural door in every realm, planetary, heavenly, water, earth, everywhere. I want you to be the gate and the door for us. Don't allow these wicked people, wicked entities, to control our past, our present, and our future. Put an end to it from this night forward. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Your people are free from tonight to begin to exercise their right in 2014. To begin to exercise their gift. Opportunities begin to be born tonight. So listen carefully. Many of you who have gift and talent, how many of you have gift and talent and there have never been an opportunity for you to exercise it and to make money with it? From tonight, God is putting a stop to it from tonight. Mark my word. And opportunities and doors going to open for you. Because when you wake up in the morning, it will seem, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. It's like somebody is pouring real cold, sweet water all over me. Oh my goodness. In the morning when you will look at the atmosphere of your city, it will be different. Even the air you breathe will be different. The dream you dream will be different. You are dreaming bad dreams because of these things that are controlling your territory. And Father, I pray for those who come from other nations and live in other nations that all the territorial powers from their nations that come to fight them in their dreams and at their place of work, in their marriages, in everything that they do, be broken. Let the rope, the ties, be broken from tonight so that they can sleep good, they can sleep better. Because while you are sleeping in the night, the witches are coming from the country where you were born. The territorial powers are working with the territorial powers here to deal with you. And that's why many of you cannot sleep. You move from the state where you were originally born in America and you are living in a different state. And the powers that control where you were born, since your name is in their book and your family's name is in their book, they are still coming after you. And that's why you are dreaming bad dreams. In order to still put you where you should not be. Tonight, 
Freedom has come. Go home and rejoice. This is heavy. To, tonight is heavy. This is very heavy. They know that you have a new job. They know that you came to this country to find your livelihood. They know that you were born to become a great person. They know you. And yet because many of them have moved and has formed a church, a, con a, a congregation around your territory just to stop you. From tonight, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable from tonight. And let me hear you shout hallelujah seven times very loud. Shout hallelujah. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, I am teaching on money must change hand. So I will send you information. Money must change hand. Money must change hand. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys tomorrow. Good night. Remember to, as you go, remember to contribute to the Chimeris Ministry. Go to my site, or you you will see my contact information, and then you can you can either write to me, send me your prayer request, or call me. Good night. Hello. Yes, sir. <laughs> I beg, you have to find time for me. I don't know what happened. You know, you did for four. Okay, let's let's go. I'm on now. I'm on. I'm in the day here. <laughs> you ain't there here. I did here. <laughs> Nobody then be asked me last say. They ask me last say. Uh, they ask them say you you were not around for quite a while. He said, "Me, I've been no going anywhere. Still there. I did for Kalakuta Republic." <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>